trying to get situated to film this extremely long overdue video. Like, I thought that I filmed this a year ago, but no, I filmed this in 2020. <laughs> It's been two years since I filmed a Nintendo Switch collection and a lot of people seem to enjoy the first one. I was honestly super overwhelmed with how it was received. I'm a huge Nintendo fan and I grew up with all the different DS's so it just feels a little bit like home each time that I play my Switch at least one of my switches, which we'll get into. So just like the last time I filmed this video, we are gonna be breaking this down into sections. And the first section is obviously gonna be my Nintendo Switch consoles. Now I am in no way bragging for any part of this video. I'm just doing this because again, I love this console. I wanna share my collection with you guys and I wanna hear about all of your goodies in the comments down below. So our consoles have changed. We no longer have our first switch. It doesn't exist. It got traded in. So we don't have our OG Switch anymore, which is so sad to say. I miss it. But our Animal Crossing Switch here, which is one of my favorites. I absolutely love the colors on this. The mint green Joy-Con and the pastel blue Joy-Con, as well as the cream on the back and just the overall design of all the houses and villagers. In the back is just so detailed. This is one of the best like special edition switches and this one is kept in our game room upstairs so my husband can put it up on the monitor if he wants to play that way or he can do it in handheld in between matches with his friends on the Xbox so he likes to play some of like the N64 games on here or like Minecraft and stuff. He likes to do it on here and on the computer so this one stays upstairs in our game room. Next up we have our Mario Edition Switch. I was really excited about this one because our original Switch was the red and blue Joy-Con Switch. And so to get one that was completely red, I just thought was super clean. It looked really nice and I just really, really liked it. With the different Joy-Con attachments and the case, which I will get into when we go to the accessories part. This system is just really cool. Um, I did use a lot of our like GameStop points when I got this, so I got it for a pretty good deal. This one is kept in our living room. We don't typically spend time in our living room anymore, unfortunately. I used to be in my living room a lot with my friend Mackenzie, and we would always play the Switch in the living room. We played all of the Mario games on the Switch and we beat them. It is used sometimes if my husband decides to play in the living room on his Xbox. It's there. If we have people over ever in our life, then it will get taken advantage of, I guess. But for now, that's just where it sits. <laughs> Finally, we have our OLED model. This was one that that we definitely decided to upgrade to just because of the larger screen. My husband loves playing this one in handheld mode. I also really liked uh, how it was white because of my PlayStation 5. I think it looks really nice next to it, which this one used to be in the game room, but now the Animal Crossing one is upstairs. So this one is actually in our bedroom now, and so is my PlayStation 5. But it just looks super clean. I absolutely love this one. I think that it has a lot of great features and you're still able to use a lot of your accessories with this console just with a few added changes. So I did really like that. OLED is definitely worth it. If you guys are able to get it, I would recommend it. And if you guys haven't gotten a Switch yet, I recommend getting this one. Next up, we have the Switch lights. I have my beautiful baby, which is kept in this little custom case, which has some uh, Dalmatian patches on it. We also have a Charmander keychain and a uh, Tails little keychain which used to be on my 3DS so talk about a throwback but my yellow Switch Lite. So I got this when the Switch Lite was dropped and I did an unboxing on it. I do have like a customized little like clear case here. Um, so this one's super, super cute. I do also have an Eevee and a Pikachu little like joystick grips, which are super, super cute with the yellow color. Um, I love the Switch Lite. I did get this because I do have a lot of instances like appointments and such 
where I want to play on the go, so I usually play my Switch Lite. It's just a lot easier to take with me. I don't have to worry about any accidents happening with it and like the Joy-Cons getting broken since it's all in one piece. And I love the yellow color. Again, it reminds me more so of a DS, so I was really excited to get this when it came out. This is actually our second Switch, I'm pretty sure. And then lastly, in this extra, extra durable packed case, we have Palkia and um, Dialga limited edition Pokemon Switch Lite. I did trade in my PlayStation 4 because I was no longer using my PlayStation 4 since I got my PlayStation 5. It was just collecting dust. So I actually traded it in and I bought this with the money. I obviously had to put some Pokeball little thumb grips on it, so that's super cute. And I do have a clear case on this one just to protect it but it does have a really nice clean design on the back with gold and silver sort of like outlines. I wish it was just a little bit more. I wish maybe the buttons were silver and gold too. So those are all of our Nintendo Switches, definitely more than the average. Again, I'm super grateful to be able to enjoy this console throughout my home. So next up, we're gonna move into some accessories. So the first bin of goodies I have here are all of our controllers that we have. So we have a black Pro Controller. We also have two of the Smash Bros Pro Controllers. We have like some of the attachments. This one I put a nice little Animal Crossing decal on so it went with the Animal Crossing Switch which I'm super proud of. I just bought these and these are pretty cool. These are like um, Hori kind of like Joy-Cons but they just feel more like a controller. I haven't actually been able to use these yet so I don't know how the quality is on them but they do look really cool. My husband really wanted them. The buttons sound really good. I just hope that they respond well and there's no lag. We obviously have our Pokeball controllers from Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. I have this miniature remote from the brand Ghoulie Kit. They actually sent this to me and I was supposed to do a video with it, but they sent it to me super, super late. It kind of arrived random. I reached out to the company and said I wasn't able to make the video anymore and they just never got back to me. So I just ended up with this controller, but it is super cute and I do think that it's just so unique. It is just a like third party controller, but it's flat and it's in its own little case, but it is completely flat and it's just super small. I've never actually used it, but it does feel really good. It clicks really well. I do have a wired Zelda controller. I don't know where the wiring is for it, like the cable, but this is just a Power A controller. And then we have a wireless Zelda controller as well. This one looks really, really cool. I like this one. I did get this at Target on clearance. I know a lot of people didn't believe me, but this was like literally $7. I thought that it was really cool that it had the D-pad on it. So it's just a D-pad single Joy-Con. It is Zelda and my husband said that this really helped him out when playing Breath of the Wild. So he did actually really like this controller, but unfortunately we haven't really taken advantage of it for any other games. We do have our Zelda Joy-Cons. These are super cool. I love the color on these. I love the pattern. We also have the highlighter green and like hot pink. Uh, Joy-Cons. I think it's weird that I keep holding them kind of opposite, but yeah, we have this set too. And then lastly, we have the highlighter yellow ones, which I was really, really excited about because I love highlighter yellow. I don't know why, so anything highlighter yellow, I'm just drawn to. We do have a bunch of cases. I'm not really going to go too into detail, but we have some like silicone cases for the Switch Lite lots of silicone cases. I ended up getting these from like a uh, Amazon bulk return store. Unfortunately it shut down but I literally paid like 50 cents a piece for these. Um, this is one that was sent out by the company Moco in my last video. Uh, this is the case that came with the Mario Edition Switch. And then this is one of our very 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 first Switch cases. It's super durable. This is what we used to always take our Switch in before we got some of our other cases. 
cases. I also got the Animal Crossing Switch case when I bought my Animal Crossing edition of the Switch. And my most recent case is this one. I love it. It's like a retro Pikachu and it's purple. Super cool. This is the one that I've been using recently. My friend Mackenzie actually got this for my 23rd birthday. Now this little bin is kind of full of miscellaneous. We have like some Joy-Con cases, which probably aren't the best. We also have some like Mario wheels in here. Um, we have like this. We also have the Mario little attachments and then all of our other attachments that we have are down here at the bottom, which there's a lot. I do also have this little 3D fossil um, little container. This is what I would put a lot of my loose cartridge games in upstairs. Our last bin of accessories. We have another case. We have some more of these bad boys. I have some screen protectors, some decals, which are really cute. Now on to the last portion, which I'm sure is probably the portion that everybody cares about, and it is all of our games. The first one here is Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town. I did play this a little bit. I was kind of disappointed in it. I didn't really love it as much as others, but it's really cool to have the premium edition. I really like the little bonuses in here. I actually did an unboxing on this on the channel, so you guys may have already seen this before. Speaking of, we have another one. I think this is actually the only way that this game comes is in this like storybook edition. It's really cool. I wish I would have done an unboxing on it, but this is The Cruel King and The Great Hero, and it is really, really cute. The art style is fantastic. It's a nice little, like, RPG kind of. Uh, it's super cute. I did kind of buy this impulsively just because it was only, like, $40, and I thought that that was a great deal to get, like, the storybook, a little plushie, just everything that it came with. I thought that was great, and at the time I was working at GameStop, so all the new ones that came in. I would usually have to like resist, but I couldn't with this one. I haven't played this game yet, but this edition is really cute and I hope to be able to play it sometime soon, but there's a lot of games that I haven't played yet that we own in our collection. These are what I would call like some staple games that aren't necessarily Mario. We obviously have Animal Crossing New Horizons which came out at just the right time. I've done some gameplay videos on this but we did have sort of like a family feud situation in the house relating to this game and since then like nobody has played it because it's just been a little bit of PTSD. Next up we have Kirby Star Allies. I was kind of disappointed in this game. I did play it with my husband. It's very, very easy, very, very quick. The graphics are really cute. It does look absolutely stunning, but I just was expecting a little bit more from a Kirby. We have Splatoon 2. I didn't really love this game. I definitely bought it because a lot of other people enjoyed it. I think it would be a lot more fun if I was playing with like somebody online, but I just wasn't really a big fan of it. I didn't really get it, and I kind of just gave up on it. Kirby in the Forgotten Land. This is a fantastic game. I absolutely loved this game. The abilities, the graphics, the story. It was absolutely insane. I played this at one of my tattoo appointments, so I played it for six and a half hours straight, and then I came home and I finished it. It was beautiful from start to finish. I absolutely loved it. If you guys have not picked this up yet, I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. All right, now we're going to move into the Mario-esque sort of games. So we have Yoshi's Crafted World. I was kind of disappointed in this one as well. Again, visually stunning. I absolutely love Yoshi. He's obviously one of my favorite characters. But I just felt like this game kind of fell short. It wasn't as challenging as I wanted it to be, but I did play it with my husband um, and we did finish it, but it's just not something that I don't think I'm ever going to go back to, unfortunately. Luigi's Mansion 3. I obviously played Luigi's Mansion on my 3DS. That was one of the reasons why I wanted a 3DS back in the day. Um, I did enjoy this one and I did beat it. Um, my husband also played it and really liked it. I kind of want to go back to it because I don't really remember it. It was so long ago. New Super Mario Bro U Deluxe. I did play this with my friend Mackenzie. We did beat it. We also beat the Luigi U, which is really fun. When I had this on the Wii U, I didn't have the Luigi version, so it was really cool that they're both included in this. The Luigi one is definitely really, really challenging, but it is a lot of fun and definitely makes for a great time with friends. 
Um, this is just a classic one. I mean, I know a lot of people are mad that they're re-releasing games, but if you missed out on the Wii U, pick it up. If you enjoyed it on the Wii U, pick it up. Super Mario 3D World. Um, this one also has Bowser's Fury. This is one that I did play on the 3DS. I did play this again with my friend Mackenzie. We beat it. It was fun. I definitely liked the worlds and how it worked, but I kind of like just the regular 2D scroller, to be honest, with Mario. We have Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which I don't know if this is available anymore. I heard something where this was like a limited run sort of thing, but it has Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. Super Mario Odyssey, a definite staple on this console, definitely gives you just... It's a whole new Mario adventure that you would never expect. It's so different. It's so out of like out of the ordinary. The maps are incredible. The colors, the soundtrack is so good on this game. I love this game from start to finish. It was amazing. Again, this is one that I would love to revisit because I don't remember every single aspect of it, but I had a great time when I played this and I could not put it down. Mario Kart Deluxe. This is Mario Kart 8. Um, again, kind of same thing. It's ported from the Wii U and now they're adding all these tracks which just means that we're not going to get a new Mario Kart for like another year. And then lastly we have Mario Party Superstars. If you guys are debating between picking either of the two Mario Parties that are available on the Switch you definitely want to get this one. The mini games are a lot more fun and so are the boards. I do wish that similarly with Mario Kart they would actually port some more boards onto this one um, instead of limiting us to the four that we have. If they end up adding more boards, it's going to be insane. I would love that so, so much, but this is a lot of fun. Now, obviously we have a bunch of Zelda games in our collection because my husband is a huge, huge, huge Zelda fan and grew up playing the Zelda games. I unfortunately did not, so I haven't really played any of these at all. I do think that The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is super cute, and if I was to play a Zelda, it'd probably be this one. We also have Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. I feel like this would be a fun one that I would probably enjoy too. We also have Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. The only thing I know about this is that my husband did not like how the controls worked, something about the camera. And then lastly, we have Cadence of Hyrule. I did buy this one kind of impulsively. I just saw that it had some Zelda characters on it, like Link. Next up we have uh, the Pokemon games that are available on the Switch. Any of them that have two versions, we have both versions. So we have Eevee here and Pikachu from Let's Go Editions. We have them both because my husband will play one and I'll play the other one. It just works out. And then we also have Pokemon Sword and Shield. And then we have Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. We have new Pokemon Snap. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Kind of doesn't really have too much replayability. Um, obviously, if you've played the original Pokemon Snap, you kind of know what to expect from this. And then lastly, we have Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. I've never actually played this game. So next up are more of our like action kind of games. Borderlands Legendary Collection, which obviously has Borderlands, Borderlands 2, and Borderlands the pre-sequel. Next up, we have Resident Evil The Origins Collection. We both love Resident Evil. He grew up with Resident Evil. I got into Resident Evil as like a teenager, so it's really nice to have these additions and these ports. It's obviously the same good old fun. Bioshock The Collection. Bioshock is definitely one of my favorite, favorite games. I actually streamed the whole entire first Bioshock on my Twitch when I was doing Twitch. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I had a great time, but I have played all these games and I do love them. I remember struggling so much in Bioshock Infinite with the very end, like the Zeppelin. I just could not do it for some reason and it would make me so mad. Bioshock in handheld mode in a dark room is just a whole nother experience. I also have the Telltale games, The Walking Dead, The Final Season. Um, I really messed up with playing these games because I played them on all different consoles, so I was really annoyed that my stories never could like connect. Black Sad Under the Skin. This was a really cool concept. I was really excited for this game when I saw it. I decided to grab it. However, it being on the Switch isn't necessarily the best. I feel like it's super gimmicky. It freezes. It lags. 
the dialogue just doesn't match up sometimes. I've had a lot of issues with this one. This is like one of the only games in our collection where I've actually experienced a lot of like latency issues with it. We have Resident Evil Revelations of the Collection. I absolutely love the Revelations games when I was little. These were fantastic. I played them on everything. I played them on my 3DS. I played them on my Xbox 360. I played them on my PlayStation and now I have them on the Switch and I played them and beat them on every single console. These are fantastic. I feel like the revelations are super underrated. A lot of people don't talk about them, but I have had a fantastic time with them. I love them and I replay them quite often. And then lastly in this category, we have Tormented Souls. And let me just talk to you guys about Tormented Souls. So I bought this game because I was like, oh my god, another horror game on the Switch. Fantastic. And I think it was only like $30 or something or $40. It was the same exact price as, to, as if I was to buy it on the PlayStation 5. And the graphics looked the same. So I was like, why buy it on the PlayStation 5 if the graphics are going to look like that? Let me just get it on the Switch. I think I'd enjoy it a lot more. And this is a really fun game. It is absolutely infuriating at times and it does have a lot of Resident Evil sort of aspects to it and I learned the hard way about the saves. The saves are not unlimited. You can't just save whenever you want so if you die you have to restart from your last save. Annoying but I've already restarted this game like four times. I have not beat it but I've restarted it like four times trying to save up my saves and get as far as I can before using any of them and it's it's a fun game i think it fits for the switch i think playing in handheld mode makes more sense moving along we have some more kind of random games first up we have nino kuni wrath of the white witch and nino kuni 2. i bought these on the switch because they were a little bit harder for me to play on console because the text was so small and the cutscenes are absolutely fantastic the art is beautiful, they are stunning, and I am just overjoyed with these. Like, these are such a good time, and I I can't recommend them enough. Minecraft, I don't really care about Minecraft. I know, controversial, but a lot of people in my household like Minecraft, so they bought it on the Switch. Spyro, the Reignited Trilogy, my husband bought this for me um, when we were traveling to go to a bunch of different concerts and we were staying at hotels. This was kind of my like time waster. This is a game that I haven't played yet. This is New Super Lucky's Tale. Uh, this was one that when it was announced, I was really excited about. This is kind of a random one. Uh, this is another situation where I worked at GameStop and I saw this game and I was like, $20 for a Switch game? Oh my god, and it's new. Girl, let me grab that. So I did grab this one. Obviously I watched the trailer. I thought that it looked really good. I thought that the art style was fantastic on this one. Absolutely stunning. The characters look great. I know when I play this game I'm not going to be able to put it down so I've definitely been holding it off because I just I can't get into it right now. Spirit Fair is actually the game that I am currently playing. Um, this was one that I definitely bought just because I worked at GameStop and what do you do? You put out games, you see them, you're like hmm that's interesting and you buy them. So that's why it's a bad thing to work at GameStop because you buy so many games. I'm just kidding. Uh, this is a great cozy at home campfire late night game. I've been playing it at a lot of my tattoo appointments but it's so soothing. The soundtrack is beautiful. The characters are beautiful. I absolutely love this game. I think that it is darling and if you guys kind of want a cozy like time waster sort of game one that you could really get engulfed in I would definitely recommend this one because it is just beautiful. We have Overcooked 2. I was really excited for this game, but unfortunately I don't think it's for me. Next up we have Wonder Boy. This is another really really good like time waster, super cute side scroller. I have played quite a bit on this one, but I have not beaten it. This was one of the very first like indie sort of games that I wanted on the Switch for so long. It took me forever to get it. I don't really know why. This was kind of a gag game. This is Sushi Striker The Way of the Sh Sushido. I bought this kind of on a whim. I did see the launch trailer for it though, and I was like, oh my god, I need that. This is a lot of fun. The cutscenes are really, really gorgeous in it, and it's just a simple, fast-paced, like, continuous game. I mean, there's not much to it. Uh, you're just kind of firing <laughs> sushi. <laughs> 
Um, but it is a lot of fun if you guys like sort of like bejeweled games and stuff like where you're combining, you know, several of a color or shape into one. This is like that except it's sushi. Fire Emblem Warriors, some would say this is a staple in the collection, but it ended up in this pile. This is a lot of fun if you're playing with somebody. Uh, I really, really like it. I love hack and slash type of games, so I am just always running around trying to do as many combos as I can. Pikmin 3 Deluxe, I played this game on the Wii U. I actually got it for free because I bought some Mario games, so then you could like claim a free game, and I was like, oh my god, I want Pikmin, because you can only pick between like three games. Pikmin are so cute and when I saw that they were putting it onto the Switch I was like yes, 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 please let me relive that because we don't use or I don't, I don't even know where our Wii U is at but we just don't have it and I loved playing this on the little Wii pad so it's basically the same exact thing. This is a game I haven't played yet but I definitely bought because I thought that it was really really cute so hopefully it's good. This is Little Dragon Cafe. I bought this a while ago when it was like buy two get one free on the pre-owned games. Um, it looks like a story of seasons or like a harvest moon type of deal, but it's with a dragon. At least that's what I get from it. I actually just bought this game today. This is Cookie Mama Cookstar. I remember when this first came out and there was that whole like cryptocurrency or like coin something. I don't really know what was going on with that. It was kind of crazy and this game was like worth a lot because they were taking it off of shelves. I don't really know what happened with that, but it's been available at GameStop for a minute, so I let it sit there. And it is currently the Pro Day sale, so I did get this on sale for only $25, which I thought was a really good deal. Speaking of Story of Seasons, we have Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town. I loved this game. I love Harvest Moon games. I love Story of Season games. I just love being able to raise my animals, have my own little farm, plant my crops, go mining. I just love it. I love building relationships with people. I like this is my version of like Animal Crossing, like where people can spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours playing Animal Crossing. I can spend hours and hours and hours and hours playing these types of games. I absolutely just love consuming myself in the world, in the life, and just living my best life. One world, however, it is still sealed because I heard that it was not the best and I'm afraid that it's going to be like Pioneers of Olive Town where I'm kind of just like, eh. So I haven't played it yet. On a lighter note though, Harvest Moon Light of Hope is a fantastic Harvest Moon game and Again, if you love Harvest Moon, you know the drill. It's basically the same thing over and over, just little slight differences, and I will definitely give you all of my money no matter how much you keep recycling this because I love Harvest Moon. We have Layton's Mystery Journey, Catriel and the Millionaire's Conspiracy. I never got to play these games on the DS, but I do remember them coming out on the DS. A lot of people were really into them. It was always a game I wanted to try, but I never got to. So when I saw that it was coming out on the Switch, I was like, hmm. So I did end up picking it up one day. I did play a lot of this. Uh, it reminds me of when I used to play games on the PC, like the Mystery Games or the Nancy Drew Games where you find the clues. I was big into that way back when. This one's a lot of fun. It does remind me of those games just with, the, you know, a little bit more of a story to it, a little bit more of a challenge and some like fun little mini games. So I do appreciate that with this, but my favorite part is obviously interviewing people and finding the clues. The last game that we have in this pile is Kitaria Fables. This looked like a like Harvest Moon type of game except all of the villagers are like animals so it was like Animal Crossing meets Harvest Moon and I was really intrigued by it. Um, they were advertising this a lot on the screen at GameStop when it was coming out so I really wanted to pick it up and I was definitely peer pressured into buying it but yet again I have not played it yet. <laughs> Lastly, we have all of our unopened games. So these are games that I've probably bought recently or forgotten about. The first one we have here is Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. I do remember I bought this at Target. This was another one of those games. It does say $19.99, but it was only $10. This is Scribble Knots Showdown. Owl Boy. I bought this game because it reminded me of this, probably because of the titles. Uh, this one I did get from work. This is Raymond Legends Definitive Edition. I did play Raymond on my 3DS. And I also bought Sonic Forces, another game that I had on the Wii. I remember playing this and I thought that it was pretty 
pretty badass. This is like a rhythmic type game. It looks really, really clean. It was actually on clearance for $8 and I was like, $8? I can't say no. Recently I picked up Plants vs. Zombies. I loved playing Plants vs. Zombies on my computer. I was one of those girls. Loved that game. I know this one is completely different. Obviously it's not just like grabbing the plants and like planting them. Um, or the pea shooters, you know? This one's a little more like 3D. I've never ever 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 played this version. I know that it's on like every single console out there but I've never played it. It actually went on clearance at Target a few weeks ago for like $14.99 and I was like, yes, I'm gonna buy that. We have Destroy All Humans. This was another game that was on clearance for like $12.99 and I was like, you know what? I wanted to play that. $12.99? Sold. And with that, that is my entire Nintendo Switch collection. Let me know in the comments down below what your absolute number one game is on the Switch, a game that you would recommend to anybody that's considering buying a Switch or has recently bought a Switch. I love you guys, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Peace out, Girl Scouts.